Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and this will be part one of the video series on programming and periodization of strength and conditioning training. And this one will explore how to create a micro cycle of training. Before creating a program, we first need to understand what exactly strength and conditioning training is. Essentially, strength and conditioning refers to training that has the goal of improving physical performance. So this type of training focuses on athletes who want to perform better in their specific sport from a physical standpoint. Therefore, strength and conditioning may look different for different athletes since the physical demands of each sport are not the same. The first factor we need to consider when creating a microcycle is training frequency. We need to establish what days the athlete or team has sport practice and what days they will conduct strength and conditioning sessions. Realistically, most athletes would be able to conduct one to two strength and conditioning sessions per week on top of their sport practice. During the off season, they may be able to conduct more sessions than this, although for this video, we won't be planning a high frequency training schedule. For this video, let's use an example of a basketball team or athlete. Let's say this athlete has two basketball practice sessions per week on Tuesday and Friday, and one competitive match on Sunday during the season. During the preseason, let's say that this athlete still has a training session on Sunday or a practice match. We will also say that this athlete or team will be performing one strength and conditioning session per week as their training frequency. So the best day to implement a strength and conditioning session would probably be on Wednesday or Thursday as this is not too close to the competitive match on Sunday. Let's say for this athlete, they will conduct their strength and conditioning sessions on Thursdays. We will now look at the primary training qualities that can be used during strength and conditioning training. The primary qualities that we can train are max velocity speed, which refers to how fast an athlete can run at top speed, Acceleration ability, which refers to speed over the first 5 to 20 meters of a sprint. Change of direction ability, this is how fast an athlete can decelerate and then re-accelerate in a different direction. Plyometrics, this refers to how well an athlete can utilize the stretch shortening cycle. Power training, this is the ability to move moderate loads as fast as possible. Max strength training, this refers to how much total force an athlete can produce. Hypertrophy training, which refers to training for muscle growth, and endurance training, which is the repeatability of performance. Not all athletes will benefit from training all of these qualities, so only the qualities which are relevant to the athlete's sport should be implemented. For example, speed and change of direction training is not relevant for swimmers. It should also be understood that some of these qualities will be trained indirectly through the athlete's sport practice and may not need to be trained during strength and conditioning sessions. For example, athletes playing a court or field sport will perform hundreds of changes of direction during a week of sport practice, and receive a specific endurance training stimulus with every practice session. Therefore, these qualities probably don't need to be trained anymore during strength and conditioning sessions. Let's use an example athlete and select qualities which they will train during strength and conditioning training. For this example, we will use our basketball player as mentioned before. A basketball player can benefit from acceleration training, change of direction training, plyometrics, power training, max strength training and endurance. However, change of direction ability and endurance will already be trained during sport practice. So only acceleration, plyometrics, power and max strength will be trained in our strength and conditioning sessions. Let's now lay out the complete week to see the final micro cycle of training. So for our basketball example, this athlete has basketball practices on Tuesday and Friday and a competitive match or an additional practice session or practice match on Sunday. And we have implemented our strength and conditioning sessions on Thursday. In the next video, we will take this micro cycle and apply progressive overload to create a meso cycle of training. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.